Okay, Gauss's Law Part 2. Um, if you remember in the last unit, we found the E due to a long line of charge. And um, it took me um, two YouTubes to do that. It took me um, about 20 minutes to tell you that on, a, on two different YouTubes. And so, but I'm going to do it now in one YouTube. And the way I'm going to do that is um, if this is the long line of charge... Let's say that line of charge has, um, it's positively charged. The last one I made vertically, this one I'm making horizontally. Okay, well, um, if we wanted to know the electric field, say right here, then um, what? this is what I'm going to do to get the electric field. The electric field goes out in all directions, like a spindle goes out in all directions here. And... Um, and so to get the to get the field right here, I'm just going to put a Gaussian surface. You always start out with a Gaussian surface. In Newton's laws, you always start out with a free body diagram. Well, with Gauss's law, you always start out with a Gaussian surface. There's only two Gaussian surfaces we ever use. One is um, a cylinder and the other is a sphere. You can get everything done with those two surfaces. Okay, so um, that's my Gaussian surface. And uh, you'll see that, uh, let's say that the charge density, the linear charge density is lambda. That's the linear charge density. That's the charge per length. Okay. Well, um, if I want to know the field here then, you see how much flux is coming out the sides of this cylinder? This side and this side. How much flux is coming out those? The answer is zero amount of flux because the field just goes straight up, straight down. And so it's all going, the only flux that there is through this cylinder is through the sides. And so the Q enclosed over epsilon naught is equal to the closed surface integral of E dot dA. So here's one way to find the total flux through a closed surface, and here's the other way to find the flux through a, a closed surface. Okay, the, the, this way to get the flux through this closed surface, it's gonna have to be, um, if I know the lambda of this thing, then just multiplying, let's call this, let's call the length of this cylinder L. Then the lambda of this thing is going to be, um, or excuse me, the Q enclosed is lambda times L. Since um, if you come over here, if I solve for Q, isn't, isn't Q lambda times L? Okay, so I'm going to divide that by epsilon naught. So I'm done with that side. Okay, this side though, the electric field is going to be um, equal to or excuse me, the total flux is going to equal E dot dA, but I can get rid of the dot product, because here, see this dA? Here's the dA, here's the E. They're in the same direction. And so we can get rid of the dot product. And we can do that because E is parallel to dA. Oops. Didn't mean to put a vector over that parallel symbol. It's parallel to dA. Ignore that line there. So you can get rid of the dot product. Okay, now do you see how we can make the argument that E is the same here, as here, as here, as there, as there, as there? Because of the symmetry arguments, why would we expect E to be stronger here, than here, than there? They're all the same distance away. And so we can pull E out of the integral. Uh, because E is, is uniform at all points on this surface. Okay, next. Um, n now it's just telling me to add up all the DAs. So all the DAs, I'm not going to add up the... the the sides because there's no flux out the sides, so it's it's just going to be um, the flux out the out um, this part, and so to get that area, I'm just going to cut this 
And if I roll it out, do you see how that area, if I roll out that area, um, this part is 2 pi r, this part, and this part is L. So that area is going to be, uh, let's see, lambda L over epsilon naught is equal to 2 pi r e times 2 pi r l. Okay, well, the l cancels out. We have an l on both sides. And it should. Should the electric field depend on how far I, how, how wide I made the Gaussian cylinder? No, that's an imaginary cylinder. It shouldn't depend on that. Turns out then that, can I sneak this in here? If I bring the 2 pi r underneath here, I get E is equal to lambda over 2 pi epsilon naught r. So I, I did that on one page in about six minutes. That was faster than before. That was definitely faster than before. All right, um, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna cut this video short. That was the electric field due to a long line of charge. Oh, yeah. Well, let me just say something about this formula. All these things are constants. Lambda is a constant. Two pi and epsilon naught. They're all constants. So if I were gonna graph this, if I were gonna graph the equation, e equals lambda over 2 pi epsilon naught r. It looks something like this. It's a 1 over r graph. That's what it looks like. All right, see you in the next one.